Welcome to this series of videos about uh, algorithms. The series is actually named Introduction to Algorithms and that's uh, mostly in reference to the book that we will guide us from that has that exact name, Introduction to Algorithms, and it's authored by uh, C-L-R-S. And these are the initials of the author's name. So that's my uh, idea when I I do I use that abbreviation. Although more often I'll refer to the first author last name that is Corman to refer to the book. So the Corman's book will actually mean the book uh, written by these four persons um, named Introduction to Algorithms. Despite the name of this series of videos, um, we are not uh, going to actually uh, start the introduction from the zero. Uh, the audience is expected to have um, basic experience with programming, with computer programming, and um, a foundational knowledge in data structures. Um, that is, I would be expecting the watcher to have, for example, written the implementation of a linked list and to have a basic knowledge, a basic notion of uh, asymptotical complexity. And nonetheless, in these videos, we are going to, uh, in quite a thorough way, explore asymptotical uh, analysis and correction proof of algorithms, at least the introduction of, it, of, the, of this. Um, for this video in particular, we are going to look at sorting algorithms. So I honestly hope you enjoy it. Um, and it is on chapter on chapter two. Uh, on my edition, it is page sixteen. So, Karma teaches uh, insertion sort with um, with parts, and what is it about? Uh, let's suppose we have a sequence of numbers, and we can and we have them on an array uh, named v. So, we have this sequence v v one v two. And it goes all the way up to v n minus 1. And um, what we want to do want to do here is to put them on an ascending order. So we want to sort them ascending. What does that mean? That means we want v0 to be lesser or equal to v1 and on its way all the way to v n minus 1. So uh, this is the final sequence we went. We went uh, the array v uh, and this is an array. When it uh, uh, independently of the values it has, we want them to uh, to resort them in order for this uh, property to be verifiable. And we want to preserve all of its original values and uh, we cannot delete helmets. So the original helmets have to be here and they have to show to be shot in a way it presents this property and we do not want to delete any of it. Um, all right. It's funny that I thought uh, the first one was selection sort. Uh, clearly it is not. Uh, but we will talk about it, and, we, and I went to so some properties as well, and that one. Um, so, let's move on. Uh, so, maybe I should have pick, picked some paper, um, but anyway. So, 
And I, the idea with insert and sort is to have, for example, um, let's see, I will use the same example from Wikipedia. So six five three one eight seven two four, and what we are going to do is to pick um, this one because it is greater than this one, and we are going to resort them. So five six and oops, uh, okay, and I'm back, I think. And we are going to do that uh, repeatedly, so we know now that um, this, we started with this, this was the, um, the sorted part, and then we, we move forward to, actually, let me erase um, this here, um, really fast, so I can show something. Um, this was the original sequence. And now we have six and all that sequence again. And six is sorted because it is a single helmet, so we don't have anything to do with that one. But the moment we consider uh, six and five, we become uh, we have to pick five and put it here. And now this is a sorted sequence. And when we go to 3, when we consider uh, this and 3 over here, we are going to, s to pick this one and insert it before this. And now we have once again uh, resorted it. Now, it becomes slightly more complicated uh, when we have something, but it's not still the case with one. And uh, let's see. In, in, in any case, we can already solve something. So, for example, um, when we picked three, we have compared it with six, and we said, uh, "Is it smaller than six? It is." So we have compared it with five. Is it smaller than five? It is. So we actually have this array over here with six, five, three, one, and all this. And when we pick five, we compare it with six, but we, what, we are, we are, what we are doing is more on the following line. We take five to a temporary variable over here, and our array is something like, it doesn't matter what is here. We know it is five, but for now, we don't care. And we compare, compare 5 with 6, and we say 5 is lesser than 6, so we are going to move 6 to this position, and we now have an array that we, once again, we don't care about what is here. And we have 6, 3, 1, and now we say there is nothing on this side, this is the beginning of the array, so 5 goes there. And so we put 5, Six, three, one. So the idea here is we pick a number, uh, we compare with each element behind it, and we still move each to uh, we move each forward one place, and we put the the value we had took off on its new position. And I hope this wasn't confusing. There is a GIF on Wikipedia, I think so. Um, I can show it really fast. Maybe I should have started with that, but anyway. Okay, my internet is not helping. Um, all right. So now that we have an idea of the algorithm, we want to see the invariant. And what is an invariant? Um, invariants, invariants are um, the bits that allow us 
allow us to be confident that the algorithm is um, is performing correctly and is going to present uh, the desired uh, characteristics. So we use invariants, we select invariants uh, as the, um, the components of the algorithm that for each iteration, for each step of its execu execution, uh, ensure or uh, allow us to, to verify that the algorithm is in fact correct and is operating correctly. Um, so, for this algorithm, we can elect two invariants. And um, the invariant is, uh, given the following array, representing the middle of the execution of this algorithm, we know that V0 and dot, 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 v high minus 1 and v high dot, 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 and let me erase this, it is a bit tough to sort, short, um, v and minus 1. So we have this, and what we are doing, what we are saying here is that this bit of our algorithm, and let me draw this a little less than, okay, there you go. Um, we say this is sorted. Uh, what happened? Why am I writing in two different places? Oh, sorry. Uh, this is ascendantly sorted. While we do not know in which way this part is. So, our invariants are V0 V i minus 1 are ascendingly sorted and um, we can also say that v0 dot 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 v high minus 1 are the same values um, from the original Array. And I shall note that what we are doing here is a uh, in place sorting. It has, we are not changing the original array. See a bit more of it. All right, and here we go. So this was the the main problem, okay? But there is a sub problem that is. Um, insert insert in the right sequence correct 
And um, if we have, uh, and let me let me actually pick um, this bit again. So we have this, correct? And where is it? Um, uh, okay. I thought okay, it is here. Interesting. And can I drag it around or not really? Maybe it is. Uh, the move tool. Where is okay? It is here. All right. So. Sorry about this. And okay, here we go. So we said that this is always correct. Maybe if uh, I use another color, it's better. This part is always in. It's already sorted. So we have sorted an array, and each iteration we say um, this part of the array until the position y high is sorted um, it's already features the, 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 the characteristic we want it to but it does not have all the values of the array we are inserting the values on the, the sorted part um, for, for, um, uh, at the same pace we are discovering them so we find a new, a new value and we add it to the known sorted part. And we started with uh, a, a zero sized array and we, uh, so we had nothing. Then we had a value and it was the first value from the original array because uh, one value, value alone already is sorted. And then we see the second and um, the second um, value of this, this array and we had it um, on the right place. So the idea is to increase um, the sorted part of the array and at the same time we will learn new values from the non-sorted array. Okay, um, so we want to preserve the sorted uh, the sort of characteristic of the, the, the left side, the left hand of the array. Um, and so I suggest the following. If we have a variable j and it starts with high minus 1, while J is greater than zero, and uh, V J is is greater than X, V J plus one is V J. So I'll, I'll leave it like that. And v of j plus 1 is x. Alright, so what are we doing here? We start from the last position of the sorted part of our array. We again, I remember. I recall we are doing um, an in-place sorting. So we start from the last position known uh, of the sorted part. And for that, we are going to do the following tests. 
j has to be, j is our iterator, um, j has to be, and, and I want to note that we are starting from the end to the beginning, and j has to be greater than zero, and we are decreasing j. So j is greater than zero, and uh, if j is greater than hex, vj, vj is greater than x, then what we are going to do is, and I should actually uh, make it clear that, let me, I should make it clear that x is the value we are going to, to add. Um, as said, uh, that in certain sort we pick a, a number and we put it in a temporary value, a variable. And this is the, that number, that variable. So x uh, is the number, the number we are adding to the sorted part, all right? And what we are saying is uh, the, the position j of the, no, the sorted array is greater than x. If this condition is verifiable, then we move j to j plus 1, all right? Because we are doing that, um, that uh, peak and movement forward. Um, let's make this obvious. Let's see. If we have, if we have um, when free, correct? And x is um, is two. We take two off to the very. Uh, this is the array actually. We take two off to the hex variable, and um, and so we have the following. Uh, this is the position zero. Um, this is uh, actually. Uh, let me do a better example. Um, our sorted array. Had, sorry. Um, let me do an, an array here. So this is the sorted bit, and this is the unsorted bit, and um, this is zero, and this is y minus one. And this is, uh, which is also known as the initial j, and um, this is y, and it goes on through that. All right. And what we are doing is x is equals to hand. We are going to move uh, to compare. 2 is greater than 0, check, and um, and um, sorry, vj, and vj is, is 3, is greater than 2, check. Okay, so if it is these two conditions match, we are going to put vj which is this one equal to vj plus 1, which is y. So uh, the array becomes uh, 1, um, I, don't, I think I said the, 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 the opposite of what I meant, but um, reading this line, okay, we are going to go to pick this position, which is 
j plus 1, it's y. So we go to this position and say, hey, uh, now you are free. All right? So this is the current state of the array uh, at this instruction. Okay? And now we decrease j. j becomes j minus 1. So uh, j is no longer this, j became this. And we say, is j greater or uh, greater than zero and j is not greater than zero because j is zero so zero greater than zero false so we go to this instruction and this instruction says vj plus one this is uh, this this here is equals to x and x is two so the current array is 1, 2, 3. Um, Alright, so hopefully that made the algorithm clear uh, for the soup problem. Um, okay, so what we want to see now is the greater algorithm for the session. So, what is this algorithm about? This algorithm is, quite essentially, um, for high equals one uh, high lesser than n minus 1 we are going to um, let me think Uh, sorry, uh, plus plus and y. So from one to n minus one, um, we are going to. And actually, maybe it should be consistent, consistent, and say high, high plus one, just for the sake of consistency. And um, what we are going to do is x receives v high and j receives high minus 1 and well the rest is trivial it's what we have talked about it's this bit and this is uh, our algorithm all we do is to pick a number um, and now put it inside, insert it um, in the sorted part of the array. Until we have reached uh, the end of it. And I want to, to clarify that uh, the array starts with zero and uh, when we talk about hand, we are talking about the hand and there it is plus one. Right. Um, so now that we've seen insertion sort quite decently, I think, we want to talk about its asymptotic complexity. So how does it work um, with regards to its complexity?
So before into the defining um, what this complexity is, how does it work, and uh, how we compute that, I'm actually going to uh, and and it's what I've been doing this this video. Uh, I'm going to just give an idea of uh, what one has to go through to do something like this. So for um, for insertion sort, we have the following. In the best case, in the best scenario, in the best case, um, the ray. is already sorted. So this is the best case, this is the best that can happen to us, is the array being already sorted. And if the array is already sorted, then the outer cycle, the outer cycle, Rams n minus one times, and um, the inner the inner cycle runs uh, finish. immediately. Um, let me just uh, explain why. So this is the outer cycle and um, what happens is we attribute and we and we yeah. Yeah, we do the auto cycle. We, we run it uh, n minus one times. Uh, there is no condition here breaking the cycle earlier, so it runs n minus one times. And um, just a sec. The inner cycle finished immediately. This is because um, J minus um, uh, J uh, will never uh, be greater than X. So it finished immediately um, because vec j greater than x is false. Um, so the complexity of this algorithm, and we call the best case complexity of uh, omega, omega, um, this algorithm. Um, is of order n minus one. We usually ignore these constants, so we say n, but um, we actually can say that this is uh, reducible to omega n. So, with that in mind, we have the, the worst case scenario. Worst case. And in 
the worst case, the auto cycle again is going to run n minus one times outer cycle runs n minus one times. And um, the inner cycles run um, well, they are going to run n minus, minus one times as well. Because let's once again open this, and uh, actually, let me be more clear. Uh, they ran cycle, cycle, runs when. To n minus one. And when I write times, I'm actually talking about comparisons. Um, so here, uh, this is times, correct? But um, this is finished immediately, uh, and here it's we are talking about comparisons. So we are we aren't um, caring about these attributions. They have they they spend some time. They have some cost, but we are simplifying. So so if we only care about the comparisons, what we have here is a total comparisons. The total comparison is n minus one plus n minus two plus one, and that's approximately n squared. So we say that this algorithm has a uh, um, a quadratic complexity, a complexity, quadrat a quadratic complexity, uh, just to ensure exactly quadratic time complexity. Okay. Um, all right. So. I'm going to pause um, this, this analysis now, um, but I want to formally prove uh, insertion sort on the next video and um, to recap a bit on a recap, uh, rapidly recap on how it works. Uh, And even to to present a different a different solution for it, um, but the what I want to to show you uh, formally is how to do a formal proof of this algorithm. Um, so so that's what we will be doing. All right. So see you in in the next video and uh, I hope this one wasn't too boring nor too tedious uh, I think it might have been a little but I intend to improve that over time so
that's it for now. See ya!